What's going on, Hokie Nation? Welcome to the second ever edition of Triumph Spotlight right here on TSL today. We're starting things off with a bang today. We've got Virginia Tech linebacker Matt Johnson. We can't wait to get things going. Matt Johnson, coming up next, it's TSL Today from Blacksburg. Today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. Triumph NIL was founded to create meaningful name, image, and likeness partnerships for student athletes. Triumph seeks to maximize individual and group earning potential and provide clarity to key stakeholders throughout creative activations. Their motto, recruit, retain, reward. Again, thank you so much for our partners at Triumph NIL. I'm Giovanni Heater, joined alongside David Cunningham, and across the way, Virginia Tech linebacker Matt Johnson. Matt, thanks so much for being here, man. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. Doing good, doing David. Good. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so Matt, let's just start, you know, ease into things a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Matt Johnson, as you stated. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Like you said, I play linebacker for the Virginia Tech Hokies. I study consumer studies, and I have a minor in entrepreneurship. Outside of football, I like to do yoga, eat food, talk to my teammates. Right. So how'd you end up here at Virginia Tech? Well, I had an opportunity to play at either Virginia Tech or UVA, and I fell in love with the recruiting staff, uh, the former recruiting staff, and I love the family orientation surrounding football, both on campus, off campus, student life, also the environment. It was home away from home, really, and I kind of found – what it meant to be like a family with brothers on this team. And that's really what got me here. You've been in this program for a long time. Some people have come, some people have gone, but what's it like, the, the family atmosphere, it feels like everybody's still, still very tight through the ups and downs. How would you describe kind of what it's been like since you got here to now and, and your bond with your teammates? It's been interesting. Like you said, people come and people go. But honestly, those relationships still last. And I'm thankful for all the guys that have come through that I've built that relationship with. You know, they know who they are. And it's been really interesting to see them come and to see them go because it's selfishly you want them to stay because you miss them. Those are your boys, your brothers. But honestly, you understand that there's another path for everybody. And oftentimes people have to leave to go fulfill that path. So individually take us through your journey with Virginia Tech football from the time you got here I know you had a handful of setbacks with injuries and, and to where we are now your eligibility stuff like that so I came in summer 2019 uh, as y'all know COVID came in the following year so I went through that first fall that first summer things were going well and then COVID came through no spring ball half of summer was lost came back around the following fall in 2020 I uh, tore my ACL week before the season started. Um, went through that whole process, came back the following year in 2021, missed spring ball because of injury. Um, played that year. That was my first year in action. And then came back around this past year, tore my ACL again, about a week and a half before the season Jeez. started. Uh, my left one was the first one I tore. My right one was the one that I just tore. And so I registered in my freshman year. COVID year, which also would have been a medical red shirt. So I didn't miss any eligibility with that. And then I came back that third year, and um, that was my first year of eligibility. And then this past year was a medical red shirt, so due to injury. So, How, how mentally tough has it been to just – just do life? I mean, not not just football, but also just to kind of stay focused and, and keep – I guess striving for what your your goals and stuff are, you know, when you have setback of, after setback. Where where are you mentally, and has anything kind of helped you kind of get over, get through the battles? Yeah, it's been extremely difficult, but I've clung to God. That's my faith has been the biggest thing that's kept me intact and kept me moving forward and making progress. But yeah, it's been extremely difficult. Um, problems in personal life, injuries. Um, Stuff on the field, stuff in the classroom, you know, you can go down the ladder of stuff that has gone gone down. But, you know, I've clung to my faith. I've clung to God, and that's the only thing that's kept me through it. So I'm very thankful. You know, regardless of the circumstance and the hardships, I'm, I'm grateful that I can still play ball. I'm grateful that I can still walk around and talk. 
every day and smile, you know, and learn and keep pushing forward, you know. What can you say about uh, what Coach Pry and this new staff has done? Um, it's not easy to come into a program and, and, and have to try and instill your own culture um, and get people that were here before to buy into a new culture. Uh, how do you think they did that, and how did that affect you and your teammates? Well, one thing, I'll, well, the first thing I'll say is these are great coaches. Um, they got me to buy in immediately. They came in with the attitude of transparency, uh, hunger to be great, hunger for work ethic and doing things the right way, but also having a family oriented orientation and atmosphere around everything. So they just kept it real from the start, you know, hard conversations, putting you in positions that maybe you don't want to be in, but understand that's for the good of the team, but also understand that we have this common goal. We need to win. We want to win. And so they've done a great job so far. Are you back officially now from injury? No. So it's kind of weird. I'm five months post-surgery, okay. five months as of last week. And so I'm in return to sport protocol right now. So there's a lot that I can do, but there's even more that I can't do. But I've been thankful to be having a steady and a progressive recovery. So I've been back out with the team doing hunger drills, lifting, Um so I'm grateful to be back doing that stuff, yes. Co Co Coach Pry has mentioned before the hunger drills and the winter workouts are, are so crucial. What's that like from a player's perspective, the 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 tire drills? How fun are, are those team-building exercises? The competition is crazy. It's, it's so much fun being out there competing with your brothers. Like, you go each and every day, you know it's a new challenge. And yesterday doesn't matter. It's only what you do today, you know, and so – Every day I step out on that field or go into that weight room, each rep, each rep in a drill, I just keep thinking about how I'm going to get better, how I'm going to honestly compete with myself because that's, you know, that's the competition. How much better can you be each and every day? And honestly, it's so much fun just having the opportunity to move forward and keep pushing yourself and see, okay, you know, tomorrow's a challenge. What am I going to do? Am I going to back down or am I going to push through it, you know? So... It's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So what's your off season looking like right now? I know you said there's a lot you can do, but there's also even more that you can't do. Will you be a full go once, uh, you know, the full swing uh, of the spring gets into things, you know, full go, game, full go for the spring game, stuff like that? I hope so. No, uh, you know, Lord willing, I don't have any more setbacks, but, you know, just keep, I'm trying to take it day in and day out mm -hmm. and just focus on my progress each and every day. But, um, Honestly, I'm hoping that I can play in the spring game, hoping that I can, you know, start off spring practice March 16th and just keep going every day. But honestly, my program consists of lifting, agility drills, a lot of rehab, uh, yoga, stuff like that. You you played in a few games in, in 2021. What was that like for you? Pinstripe Bowl, a couple games there. What were those experiences like? Um, and I guess how much does that kind of n knowing probably how, f how much fun you had when you were on the field, how much does that kind of drive you to want to get back as fast as you can so you can kind of experience that again? Honestly, that was, it was so great being back. It was a blessing. Like after missing a lot of time due to COVID and a lot of time due to injury, it was it was amazing being back. It was kind of surreal because I hadn't played a game since high school, you know, and so being back out on that field and competing again and, you know, chasing the dream, it, it was a blessing, honestly. Um, I'm so excited to just get back out there and do it again, honestly, but even better this time. Uh, it pushes me a lot. It really does push me a lot because I know there's very little that I have done and so much more that I want to do. And so... Just honestly, I look at this injury and the ones prior, just minor setback, major comeback kind of thing. Matt, we've kind of bugged you enough about football. Let's uh, talk a little bit about what you're interested in outside of football, off the field. What are your hobbies? So I think I mentioned I do yoga at Imbalance. I love Imbalance. It's amazing over there. Um, I like to cook. Of course, I like to eat. <laughs> Bowling with my teammates, that's always fun. Okay. 
Are you a good bowler? I'm all right. I need to be more consistent. <laughs> but I'm is, all right. Is there somebody on the team that's really good at bowling? Josh Fuga. Really? <laughs> Mario Kendricks. Narell Pollard. So the D-line seems to be dominating here. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Linebacker what? room getting getting a little yeah. More, okay. what, what what about cooking? Do you like what do you like to cook? You have a favorite dish? No, I don't have a favorite dish. Honestly, like I like a lot of different things. Honestly, I could eat anything. I'm allergic to nuts, so that's really the mm-hmm. only thing that I don't eat. But just give me a recipe, and I just want to throw it on a plate. You know. You said you like eating too. The student athlete performance center. How nice is that to kind of have meals catered to what you like and dislike. And I don't know if you're a picky eater or not, but for those who are picky eaters, how kind of, how nice is that to have that at your disposal? It's amazing. That's, it's been so crucial. It's a blessing. You get to go up there. That staff is amazing. Shout out the cooking staff um, and the support staff up there as well. But honestly, the fact that we get meals every day is, that's a tremendous blessing. It helps out so much. I don't have to worry about food Monday through Friday, you know? So I have some friends, to answer your questions, I have a couple of friends who really only like to eat fish and vegetables. And so, you know, the chef helps them out and picks out certain things that they, you know, might like and might, what they might not like. But as for me, I'm not picky, so I don't, I don't eat anything really. Matt, tell us about uh, planting progress. So that was a um, a project that started in a create class. I mentioned that I my minor is in entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. We started a project in one of my classes, kind of like a capstone kind of thing where we worked on it all year. Uh, we started with just a broad range of topics and we narrowed it down to food and health and equity and narrowed it down even more to Southwest Virginia. And we decided that there were a lot of issues going on, access to healthcare, especially in rural areas, um, and then food and health education. But we were like, we, where could we make an impact right now? So myself and a group of other students and student athletes decided to create a program and uh, an initiative to help combat food and health and equity in Southwest Virginia called Planting Progress, one seed at a time. And we're working with local elementary and middle schools in the area to build community gardens at those schools to help um, encourage healthy eating, uh, promote better education around food, healthy lifestyle choices, create and help educate them on interpersonal skills, but to also kind of touch on that food and health and equity access and show them that, you know, there's a, there's more opportunity if you can grow your food and, and things like that. How, how did how did the idea come about, you and and the rest of your team you guys are partnering with? What kind of sparked the idea to, to kind of take that route? And um, is, it a, is it a passion of yours, like now that you're kind of – doing it in action and, and, you know, going to those schools and interacting with, with those, those kids, what's it been like from your perspective? How has it kind of changed maybe the way you look at things? Well, it's kind of improved my thinking, but you know, the the initiative started um, because we had a common interest in serving the community as students and student athletes. We want to always give back just because we're so blessed. And personally, like, Growing up, just having a small issue with um, just financial issues growing up, you know, things were tough a little bit and we had a hard spot. Just my mom, she was raising us and just kind of being in a tight spot, trying to figure out, you know, how can I best help my mom when she's struggling right now? She's taking care of a lot of things. And so I would kind of, you know, just try and thin out meals and stuff like that. And so I'm thinking, you know, going through what I went through, how much could somebody else be going through it worse, them not being a student athlete, them not having, you know, the platform of playing ball or stuff like that or being in college. And so we just had the common goal of just serving these people who are less than us, you know, and were less fortunate and didn't have the privileges we had. So that's really what it stemmed from, and that's where that passion came from. I've always had a passion for serving others, but, you know, actualizing it into a project has been something – I've wanted to do for a while, so I'm thankful for the opportunity. You guys started a uh, GoFundMe with the goal to raise $2,500. Um, it's planting progress one seed at a time. How can people get involved, uh, and how can people help out? The easiest way would just go to the GoFundMe link, 
and donate. Uh, a big shout out to Mrs. Bridget Ryan Berman. She donated. Um, that donation has really helped us and will help us implement two gardens, our first two gardens. Mm -hmm. But going to that GoFundMe is the easiest way to help out. Also, going to our emails, you can email me directly at mattj27 at vt.edu, m-a-t-t-j-27 at vt.edu. With any concerns, any questions, any ways that we might be able to help. Um, planting progress isn't just about gardens. It isn't just about, you know, just planting food. It's about helping kids and helping promote a lifestyle that's going to better serve them and giving them tools that they can take forward into their lives and hopefully pass on to their families as well. Why 2,500 specifically? Like, why was that your guy's goal? And, you know, what happens if you get more and, and you can do even bigger and better things? So the 500 came from, we came up with a bill of materials, how much things would cost material-wise um, to implement one garden. And we came to about a $500 um, goal. Mm -hmm. And at first we had $500 listed down. Then we decided that that may be a little too small. So we increased it to 2,500 and we hope to implement five gardens by the end of the year. And so that'll be at five different elementary schools within the Montgomery County area. Nice. In Southwest Virginia. Who, who else is part of this uh, project with you? Tori Powell, she plays soccer for Virginia Tech. Callista Heister, she just uh, stopped playing soccer for Virginia Tech, but she still goes to school here. And then Reagan Green, who's also a student at Virginia Tech. Very cool, very cool. Um, Matt, outside of uh, the planting progress, now you have a, a new partnership with Triumph NIL. Um, what other opportunities or business-based opportunities might you be interested uh, as you continue your career here at Tech? you got a lot of eligibility left, so <laughs> a lot of opportunities. Yeah, a lot of time left. Um, there's a lot that I want to do, but it all stems around football. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I came to this school, you know, and so that's been my primary focus. Injury has helped me kind of increase my lens off the field. But, you know, there's one thing that I do want to do before I leave, and that two things, actually. Well, three, one, one I can't speak on yet because it's in the works. Okay. Um, but planting progress, establishing that, and making sure that that is longstanding. And then an equity deal with a company that I'm invested in and that I believe in. Cool. That would be nice. That's awesome. What you, we, you, we talked a little bit about your, your passions off the field, but – you're from Richmond. What was it like growing up in the Richmond area? And how had, you know, that background kind of influenced what you want to do in terms of entrepreneurship and stuff? That was a lot of my life. I was born in Chesterfield or North Chesterfield, lived there for a little bit. Excuse me, I was born in South of Richmond and then lived in North Chesterfield for a little bit. We moved around a lot, moved to Goochland and moved back to the West End or Richmond moved around a lot over there. Um, but honestly, I get the entrepreneurship side from my mom. She's had a lot of jobs and just seeing how she's hustled and seeing how my grandfather has hustled. Um, honestly, there's been a lot of hustle in my family and seeing how they have moved around to just support us, my brother and myself has been very inspiring and very motivating, motivating. So, but I think that entrepreneurial spirit, I think that's always kind of been in me. I think that's a gift from God because, uh, honestly, I don't I don't want to work just, you know, a regular job. I want to create something. I like to create things, and I like to follow my passions and inspirations, and I want to do great things. So, what, what does your mom and your brother, what do they mean to you? That's my family. That's my backbone, you know. I owe everything to God, but a lot of what I do is for my mom, for my grandfather, it's for my family. Um, even the ones that I don't mention, it, it's for them. You know, my brother, that's that's my brother, you know. But They're going to make it out to some games this year? Yes. My mom, she made it a priority to come to every game. Really? You know, so I've been thankful for that and her support. Um, but yeah. That's fantastic. You guys ready for a little speed round before ready, we let you yeah. go, Matt? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. All right, cool. All right, I'll tee us off a little bit here. Uh, favorite uniform combo uh, for the Tech football team? Man, that orange against UNC was crazy. That's The all orange. The all orange. That was crazy. That's my number one, but I have two more. The gray hokey stone 
and then the black with like the orange yeah up here with that famous pick of tie rod wearing it right that's amazing those are good those are good david you want to go next favorite musical artist <laughs> i have a few i, I like threes okay. you know that's yeah my number number threes like i just like threes so i listen a lot to meek meek mill uh yg tech and then babyface ray so what is what does your pregame playlist look like? Because I'm sure it's not the same, no. but a little bit. What, what what's your pregame playlist like? There's a lot going on in there. I kind of like set it in stages. Okay. You know, so bus ride, it'll be something something calm. You know, a lot of gospel, a lot of praise and worship, and then after that, it'll be like in the locker room. So that's kind of like, you know, the crescendo. Like we kind of going up. So. I'll put a lot of Meek on there. And then getting out on the field for pregame warm-ups, that's kind of like, that's just like a lot of Young Dolph, Key Glock, like stuff like that. Yeah. Who's the funniest guy on the team? Oh, man. There's so many funny people on the team. Our locker room is great, honestly. You don't got that's three? That's a hard question. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, okay, okay. Um. I'd say, I'd say Alan Tisdale. I'd say Feldarius Payne. Okay. And I'll say Miles Ellis. Those okay. three. Is there is there a coach that you think is the funniest? <sighs> or a support staff? I think somebody who is very funny. It's hard to give out the funniest. But I think somebody who is very funny is Xavier DB. Really? He's funny. He's very funny. Do you have a go-to pregame meal? No. Um, I like to have something with carbs in it, you know, for energy. Some fruit, too. But, no, I don't have a particular game, pregame meal. How about a favorite spot to eat in Blacksburg? Ooh. It's free game. You this need is, three? This is free game. I could give you three. <laughs> I like to eat at Spice City, mm. Avellino's. Okay. And Our Daily Bread. Okay. Those three, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Are, are you a big movie guy? I like movies. Do you have a favorite? Or do you have three favorites? The Creed series, mm, they have mm -hmm. another one coming up. John Wick, yeah, that's my favorite. John, John Wick, Wick, okay. That whole series, that's by far my favorite series ever. John Wick. And then 42 with Jackie Robinson, that was inspirational. Awesome, very cool. All right, one more. Any NFL athletes, or maybe not even NFL, uh, athletes in general that you kind of idolized growing up that maybe you try and model your game after a little bit? Didn't really idolize anybody. But shout! I want to say this. Shout out to all the NFL guys that just recently got drafted from our team um, in the past couple of years since I've been here. But Ray Lewis has always been somebody, myself being a linebacker, Ray Lewis was somebody who just like his aura, his mentality, who he was on the field, also who he was off the field. That's somebody, I'm like, that's a good man. Mm -hmm. And also I played running back in high school too. So Walter Payton was somebody I liked. To watch, yeah. Did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I played baseball. Baseball was the first sport I ever played. I pl also played a little soccer in elementary school. And then I ran track in high school. I wrestled in high school. So in, you uh, did middle it all. School, A little bit. And then I started football in the fifth grade. Do you wish you stuck with a different one? Or you like where you, you like, you like the path you chose of football? Well, the path I've been on is the one that's made me so... I would have definitely stuck with this, but I, I kind of wish I had kept playing baseball. Mm. I fell out of love with it, mm. but I think if I just stuck with it for a little bit longer, actually soccer, I'd say soccer, because yeah. watching the World Cup was so exciting. Yeah? Yeah. Are you cheering for anybody specific besides U.S.? No, but just watching them play, like, Messi and Mbappe, like, it was just so much fun watching them. That was the best World Cup I've ever seen. Yeah. Anything we did not ask you, didn't cover, that you, you want Hokie Nation to know? Watch out for the Hokies. We're about to do something real good this season. I like it.
Right. I like it a lot. Appreciate you coming on, man. Appreciate Thank the you. opportunity. Thank you both. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for your time, Matt. Again, David Cunningham, Matt Johnson, Will Stewart behind the scenes. I'm Giovanni Heater. Thanks so much for being with us today. This was our Triumph Spotlight, our second. Be sure, once again, we're going to leave it down in the uh, in the description. Be sure to go over to Planting Progress. Uh, one seed at a time on GoFundMe. Again, that's Matt Johnson, Tory Powell, uh, and the rest of his crew uh, putting that together. So please be sure to go ahead, show your support there on their GoFundMe. Uh, Matt Johnson, everybody, thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you next time on TSL Today.